you've been working on a project, maybe you've been working on a script, and all of a sudden you happen to see that somebody online is doing something that's very similar to what you're working on. Or maybe you see a movie or a TV show or something that's out there and you just go, that's it. That's my, that was my idea. That's it. Should you throw in the towel? No, no. I'm going to tell you why you don't, okay? That you have a unique spin on what it is that you're creating right now, okay? You have a unique voice. And believe me, there's plenty of stuff that's out there that has the same uh, storylines or similar types of characters or maybe a similar type of music that you're making or art that you're creating. And I get it. It's very easy to just go, well, that's it. It's done. It's finished. But let me give you an example of why that's not a good way to um, think, how that's not a great mindset. That sort of mindset of like, well, that's it. The thing that's out there that I was working on, it's done, it's created, it's finished. How about if people started taking that parallel with different different type of foods that you enjoy, right? So all of a sudden you just went, well, somebody's already made chocolate, that's it. Or somebody's already made a hamburger, that's it. Or somebody's already made a type of soda, or beer, or wine, or whatever it is uh, that you dig, right? Uh, I'll have to tell you, if people have that mindset and that approach about something, well, somebody already did it, so it's done and it's finished. We would never have the different varieties or different unique takes that we have on the different types of chocolates that are out there, or different types of foods, or sandwiches, or hamburgers, or whatever it is that you eat, right? Could you imagine if that was it, or somebody said, well, that's it. Looks like somebody has created cola and that's the end of it, you know? And we only had one version of a cola that you drank for the rest of your life. It would be the most boring thing in the world. You know, people come in and they have like their unique take on something where they go, yeah, but how about if I added a little bit of this or tried a little bit of different stuff with the ingredients, right? Or think about anything like, like cookies or pastries or any of these things that you enjoy. So this, so this holds true for food products. Why can't this also hold true for your creative work that you're doing, right? Um, let me give you a practical example. Okay, maybe there's something that you're doing that is you're just going, this is it. It's exactly to a T. It's it's the same thing. I'm going to tell you that there's still even another layer of uniqueness that you can bring to it. If you were to go. Sorry, didn't turn off a notification on here, but that's how it goes. Um, if you were to, uh, uh, to get, for, for example, you take something like math or sciences, right? You go into a math class and it's like, well, yes, here's the basic math or here's the basic algebra that uh, I am learning. Uh, that doesn't change. The math is the same. That's it. Well, there's also different ways that teachers can present that material. Right. So the the concepts are still the same. They say the same, but the way that the person is delivering it can change. We've all had terrible teachers, haven't we? And we can all remember our incredible teachers that we've had too. that they can take the same type of um, concepts that you've heard over and over and over again. But somebody can come in with their unique um, way of presenting it in a way where you just go, wow, I'm finally hearing it. I'm finally seeing it. And let's take an example from uh, uh, like classic, uh, classic literature, classical works. Look at something like Hamlet, right? Shakespeare's Hamlet. So what? So Shakespeare's Hamlet was just done once and then that's it? It never gets done again? No. You can take the same material and you can bring in different direction or actors or set design or costume design or whatever that is, right? And it can breathe new life into it. It's why we go back to the same materials over and over again to go, oh, I want to see it. If, you know, Hamlet's one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. If I see a production of Hamlet that's coming in town, I'm going to go see it, right? Because I want to see what the take is that's on it. 
Uh, I've seen that happen with other friends of mine that enjoy certain musicals where they just go, oh, I just want to see that again and again and again. I understand the idea about like reboots and all this other stuff that it can be just like, oh, it, was, it feels derivative. My point with this, particularly with your creative work, it's already hard enough trying to get your stuff done. But when you start to take this attitude of going, oh, well, that's it. It looks like that person's done it. So I might as well throw in the towel. Come on. You're you're literally just trying to come up with an excuse for why for why you're not going to do it, right? Uh, just looking for a recent good I'll, I'll tell you what a recent example is of this. Um, so there's the show. It was on Peacock. It's called uh, Poker Face. And then uh, – so this is – the girl that's from uh, Orange is a New Black, I can't think of what the actress's name is on it. But guess what that show has? That show kind of has a uh, Columbo feel to it. Columbo was TV detec detective series from the 1970s with Peter Falk that's in it. And here's the thing that would happen with that show. In the beginning of the show, spoiler alert, but letting you know this is how the, this is how the uh, um, framework of the show goes. You would usually see at the beginning of the show the crime or murder that was being committed, who committed the crime, and then in would come Columbo, and you as the audience knew who committed the crime, how they did it, right? And then you would see as Columbo, played by the great actor Peter Falk, would come in and, you know, very kind of quirky and all this stuff, and he'd come in and he would slowly unravel the case and solve it, right? So here you have this show from the 70s, Columbo. Then Poker Face does this with a quirky girl that's in it as the lead character doing sort of the same thing. And guess what also just came out just a few months ago? There's a show on CBS called Elsbeth that uh, is done by uh, uh, the writing, directing uh, husband-wife team, the Kings. I can't think of it. Michelle King, and I forget what the name of the, the husband is. Um, but this show, Elsbeth, who that character was a spinoff from a character uh, from a character that she played uh, on The Good Wife with Juliana Margulies. But this character, Elsbeth, it's also a Columbo type of show. And guess what? Yes, both Poker Face and Elsbeth have two main female leads, both kind of quirky characters. Same framework where we see the murder that happens in the beginning. We we see the quirky character figure this out throughout the course of the show. And guess what? They're two totally different shows, right? Two totally different types of characters, settings, all this stuff. Same framework. And also kind of both based on that Columbo style to do it. So what, all of a sudden you don't make these shows? No, these these two networks are busy making these shows and going, yeah, put it out there. There's an audience for it. I'm using that as the example for you, okay? You may have a take or a story or something on it, but how many times have you seen a story where you've gone, well, I wouldn't exactly do it like that, or maybe the character might do this, right? Even those little tweaks, those the little different things that you can do to bring your unique voice to it, all right? So what's the big thing that I want you to learn from this or to at least hear? Just because you have something that you may think is similar to somebody else doesn't mean that you throw in the towel. The best thing you can do is get back to it and to start working on it again. How do you do it? Break out your project today for 6 to 18 minutes. All right, just put on a timer, set the timer, and just sit down and just start doing it, all right? You need to be working on your work. Show up, do it, even when you don't feel like it, or even when it feels like it's already been done or somebody else is doing a version of it. Don't let that call you off what you're being, what you're being uh, uh, led to do in your life, okay? Believe me, Satan has a lot of ways to come at you from any side. Don't do it. Don't listen to that voice. Get back to it. Get to your work and get it out there. I hope that that helps. Thanks so much for seeing me in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.